stuff you don't understand? I said, yeah, that's right, sure do. He said, well, he said, well, how do you feel about that? I said, I don't think anything about it. He doesn't kind of, you know, discourage I said, no. I said, if I understand everything in the Bible, I'd know somebody wrote it didn't have any more sense than I have. <laughs> I mean, I don't profess to understand that book. Don't bother me a bit. I understand enough for it to upset me. Mark Twain said, it's not the things the Bible I don't understand that bother me, it's the things I do understand that bother me. <laughs> but you take Zachariah, you know, he sees this vision of these four horses in the, in the bottom by the myrtle trees, one red, one speckled, and one dappled, and one gray, and the man that stood by said, these horses from the north country have quieted my spirit in the north country. I don't know what he's talking about. I know what he's talking about. I'll tell you another one, the Song of Solomon. Boy, that's a, that's a buster, boy. You get the Song of Solomon. We have a little sister. What shall we say of our little sister in the day that she should be spoken for? If she be a door, we'll enclose her with a wall of cedar. And if she be a, a wall, we'll put a tower. I don't want the word I'm reading, man. Just, <laughs> just stuff. And so I never have written that. I probably never will. Uh, the Bible is, if you've got a book, it's a strange book. Now, a lot of things in life I'm real stupid about. Really. I'm not, not false human. I'm just real stupid about a lot of things. But by the time you're old as I am, you know what you're stupid about and what you ain't stupid about. What you're stupid about, you leave alone. Uh, I cannot fix a car. I cannot fix a lawnmower. I cannot fix a toaster. If it's run the gasoline, I can't fix anything. It's a clock busted. If I fixed a cuckoo clock, the cuckoo would come out backwards and say, what time is it? What time is it? <laughs> I mean, I have, I have no mechanical ability at all. See? I'm, I'm aware of that. Uh, if you want a car fixed, don't ever bring it to me. I'll open up the hood and say, there's the trouble right there. <laughs> when, when it comes to cars, I'm just like a, a woman. Just like a woman. I think if it doesn't run, sell it. That's all I know. It might just be out of gas. I wouldn't know. Goes up and says, well, it's your points there and you're on. Yeah, yeah, your points. You're a Johnson Rob and they do it. Yeah, I don't know what the cotton picking thing is. But uh, John, John McGraw, I guess, you ever know John McGraw? He must have been there before you got there. He's, he bought his car to me one time, about a 10 year old used car. None, none of our students have anything under 10 years, you know. And he wanted to, the, the, the fender was rubbing against the right tire. And I said, I can fix it for you, but it's kind of a crude job. He said, well, I got to have it off. I said, okay, so I got an axe. And I fixed it, I fixed it. I hacked a chunk out of there about a foot square, didn't bother his <laughs> under the spender anymore. So when it comes to stuff like, I'm real stupid, see? And stuff like, uh, like money and finances. I don't, I don't, I, you can't find a check I've ever signed in my church. You won't find my signature check in my church in 35 years. They give me a weekly salary and that's that. 
They all they handle all the finances. I'm in touch with finances. I'm no good at numbers. I'm no good at finances. I never wrote out a check till I was 39 years old. You don't believe that, do you? 39. I dealt with cash. I never had a car till I was 28 years old. So how'd you get around? I walk, man. I walk. I tell my boys sometimes, I say, what do you think you're two feet or four? They say, one for the gas, one for the brake. <laughs> <laughs> but I came up the hard way, just crude way. We didn't have air conditioners. I was raised in Kansas, 114 in the shade. There weren't any air conditioners. There wasn't any attic fan. Little old fans were on the table, you know. <sighs> you know. You get hot at night, leave your door open. And coming up that way, that's the things I just never learned. I was in the military all that time. People were all military. When I was, honest to God, when I was saved, outside of radio announcing and playing drums in a dance band, all I knew was how to kill people. That's all I knew. All I've been trained to do. I've never been a civilian. CMTC 17 and 18, ROTC 18, 19, 20, 21, basic training in officer cadet school 21, 22, active duty 23, 24, 25, 26, 27 years old. I didn't know anything. Nothing, man. No out of no fellow income, say nothing. Now I knew if you want to, the guys come to your house at night, lie down on the floor, you know, and then yell, and if he's trigger happy, he'll shoot. You can get the muzzle blast and get him. Uh, when, you, when your mouth is close to the floor, you can't tell where it's coming from. Really, in the dark. Put it on the ground at night, yell at a guy. I know if you want to spot a guy up in the dark in the woods at night, you never look at him, you look to the right or the left. I can tell you that. If you look right at him, you won't see him. You look off where you think it is, the right or the left, you'll, you'll pick up the silhouette. Now, ain't that practical. <laughs> <laughs> What a 40 hour a week you're going to get out of that, man. <laughs> I know how to use a, a garage, you know, take a chain or a, you know, pull up the guy's head, take the helmet, strangle him with the helmet if the buckle didn't slip off, and take it out of the century. I could take an axe, I could cut a string around a tree at 20 feet with an axe anytime, a hatchet. I'm just like an Indian boy to pitch that thing, cut the string right in two at 20 feet. Ain't that practical? That's all I knew. I'm going to take a motorcyclist out, you put a cable across the road. About 30 degrees, take him right in the ditch, take a two and a half ton truck in the ditch, you get a strong enough one, go and take up his head, you put it about three feet above the ground and make a piano wire. <laughs> well, anyway, uh, there's, there's some things, there's some things, there's some things I do know. Now, what do I know? I know books, now, I know books, I know books. I read a book a day since I was 10 years old. My read rate right now, right now is about 500 a minute. It was 700 before my eyes got uh, wearing out on me, about 700 a minute. I read a book a day since I was uh, 10, not counting 140 times through the Bible, not counting that. And I know books. And this book is a weird book. That's the strangest book you ever got your hands on. There's nothing like it. I read the Koran seven times and the Shastas, and the Puranas, and the Bhagavad Gita, and the Song of God, and the uh, Paramitra Sutra, and the, the Analects Confucius, and all that stuff. But not like this. And this thing we're studying here is going to be one of them things, and it's like this thing in Zechariah. I used to read the Bible through, and I read, uh, this is that Anna and Asa that found the asses of their father in the wilderness. Well, you know. Super Bowl or what? I mean, what's that doing in a religious book? What's that got to do with salvation? This guy's name was this, this guy, they found some jackass out there in the woods. Now, what, what do you put that in here for, see? I mean, Holy Bible, you know, heaven, hell, New Jerusalem, you know, and, and, and Ruth bought home an ephah of barley to her mother-in-law. Man, what a thrill. Awesome, man. <laughs> you, you see, that's why people don't read the Bible. It's such a dull book. I mean, honest to God, folks, some of this thing is just dull as mud. Did you? Amen, brother. Did you ever try to plow through First Chronicles? <laughs> I'll bet some of you, I'll bet some of you did real good reading your Bible through till you got to Exodus. And boy, you hit Exodus at about, uh, oh, let's see, about 25, 26, 27, 28. 
You read the tatches of the silver covering of the loops yeah. over the salvage of the five and a half cubits in the Bible. Blah, 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 blah. You say, what is all this junk, you know? And he went through that tabernacle five times. There's more in the tabernacle, there's more in the Bible in the tabernacle than there is in the universe. Well, why would God spend more time with the, with the coupling and the assemblage of the silver loops and the sockets of all this kind of stuff than he would with Mars, Venus, and the galaxies? A strange book for God to write. God made all that stuff out there. Why didn't he give you more information? Well, he gives you one cotton picking chapter. They got seven on Sarah. <laughs> Isn't it kind of a false balance or an abomination of the Lord? Why did he give a, a Bedouin woman at milk goat seven chapters and give you one in the creation of the universe. Do you think about that? It's a weird book, man. I read through here and he said, he said, I'm gonna take you to a land flowing with milk and honey, a land the Lord God cares for from the beginning of the year to the end of the year, Palestine. It's a goat hill, man. I've never been to Palestine, I don't even wanna go there. It looks like West Texas. <laughs> and, and, and why would God say that about a place like, hey man, there's no rivers in Palestine like the Missouri and the Nile and the Mississippi. There are no mountain ranges over there like the Alleghenies and the Appalachians and the Rockies. I've seen those places. I've been cutting out bamboo out in the bamboo thicket with the gooks out there in Bataan and seen the sun come up over Fujiyama and go down over Hawaii. I've seen some things. There are no places over there like that. They don't have any mountains like the, the Ghost Glockner or the Soup Spitz or Pikes Peak or Mount Everest, no place like McKinley, one of those places. They got many trees over there like redwood trees. It's a junk heap over there. Why would God say it's the glory of all lands? I don't believe it. You ever been to Austria? <laughs> the most beautiful country you've ever seen in your life is Austria. You get over there, you, every time you turn around a corner, you think you're looking at a postcard. Honest to God, you know it's such a beautiful place in all your life. And probably next, Germany. You ever see the Appalachian in the spring or the fall? I'll be up there, I, every year I go up there on the, on the Blue Ridge around the end of October. And a painter couldn't even paint that thing to make it look right. If you painted it like it was, it wouldn't look like a real painting. Why, there's nothing like that in Palestine. The glory of all lands. You know, I wonder wonder about that thing. I think I'd been through the Bible any time before I got to the message. I uh, should have got along for then, but I'll tell you how it came about. I got my, I'll get in this in a minute, this is Zachariah. But that uh, fellow up in Oshkosh, Wisconsin, he said, Ruckman, he said, if we pay your way over to Palestine, you take us on a tour of the Holy Land? I said, no, I ain't interested in going. And he said, well, we, we think you'd be a good guy. You know the place. I said, yeah, I know, I know it better than no Pensacola. I taught biblical archaeology and biblical geography for 12 years. I know like the back of my hand. And he said, well, we'd go there and let you take a tour of Idaho. I said, I don't care about it. I said, yes, you do. I said, buy me a round trip ticket over there and dump me off at Frankfurt. And then you picked me up on the way back from Frankfurt. <laughs> and they took me up on it and got me a round trip ticket over to Frankfurt. And then I went over to Germany five times after that. And uh, that's some country there now. That's some country. But I didn't care nothing about seeing that thing over there in, in Palestine at all. I mean, just a, just a junkie. I walk around the Kelstein, Hitler's uh, up there in Bechtel's Garden, the, uh, the, eagle, the eagle's nest up there on top of that thing. I walk around there and I sing, I walk today where Adolf walked. And I'm <laughs> <laughs> Christians, Christians think I was committing blasphemy, you know. I got met at Kellestine one time and I told my wife, she said, you want to see something, watch this. I got a whistle, I go. At that time, two guys over about my age looked Germans, looked up like this and looked at me, looked back at me, looked up again, you know, Vermont. <laughs> this is about 19, this is about 1978. And I said, they'll get the fever in a minute, watch this one. And I struck boom. <laughs> that thing is called Ben Rafarin Auf der Mare Hinaus. That's an SS march. And pretty soon, and they won't come over. <laughs> Guten Morgen. <laughs> Guten Morgen. Wie geht es Ihnen? Es geht mir gut. Danke und Ihnen. And they start, and I start in, bitte haben Geduld mit mir. Ich bin ein Amerikaner, und mein Deutsch sprach nicht sehr gut. Uh, sehr gut. 
if you're staying near a power of water. I'm American, I have patience with me. I don't speak very good German. I know a few words. And then one guy starts talking in broken English. The other fellow can't talk in English. And they both took tracks, tell it like it is in German. And the one guy that took it said to his buddy, back to me, he said, I'm taking this back into Eastern Europe. This is before the wall came down. I want to show it to many of my friends. They need to see this. this salvation. The other fellow grabbed him by the coat and said, these Russians, you've got to help us but these Russians. You've got to help us run them out. <laughs> <laughs> that Russian occupied zone was 15 miles from there. And that guy's ready to go again. The war hadn't been over 40 years. He's ready to go again and get him 15 miles away. And I thought about us back here in this cold war and all this kind of stuff, all scared to death. What a bunch of stuff, man. Well, anyway, I got all this book thing, and then one day it occurred to me, I know why God said that's the glory of all lands. Because that's where his son came, and that's where his son coming back to. Amen. And a man's not interested in anything like he's interested in his son. So if you want to get along with God, brag about his son. That's right. Amen. Yeah. That's what it is. Hallelujah. And the reason why you find Ace and Anna found them asses in the wilderness because Ace and Anna are kin of Edom and Esau. Esau. And Esau is kin to Jacob, and Jacob is in the line of Jesus Christ. And the reason why Sarah gets so much space in here is because Sarah gives birth to Isaac, and he's one of the greatest types of Christ Amen. in the Bible. Right. And God cares more about his son than he does this, the universe. What's the universe to God? He just said, let there be, you know, let there be, let there be, like that. <laughs> but he's interested because it's about his son, you see. Yeah. Now, this place he had here, there are flying, uh, unidentified flying objects. Here, let's take the first one. Five, two, a flying rule. And he goes inside the guy's house and makes his house rot. <laughs> now, the flying rule looks like this. It's what you call a scroll like that, like a window shade, like a book. And that thing flies through the air like that, goes to the house and rocks the wood inside the house. You say, that's not a flying saucer. No, it's not. It's a flying scroll. You say, what is it? Beats the fire to me. It's a UFO. <laughs> it, it's an unidentified flying object. That's what it is. Now, here's the next one. Verse 6, an ephah. 7, a woman, a town of lead. Wickedness, verse 8. Nine, two stork winged women. Now, an ephah is a bushel basket. Looks like this. So here's this bushel basket. And here's a woman sitting in this bushel basket. Like this. And then she's knocked down inside this thing, and a, a weight of lead is thrown over the top of this thing, like this. And then two <coughs> women come out with stork wings <laughs> and the wind in their wings and pick this thing up and carry this thing to Shinar and Shinar is Babylon, Genesis chapter 11, and it's wickedness. Now this is why they paint the angels with wings, which they don't have, and why they give them the wings of the stork, which they don't have, and why they have the baby delivered by a stork. See? Every angel of the Bible is a male not a woman. None of them have wings, and these things have wings. These are demoniac. These are principalities and powers, not devils, not fallen angels. Principalities, powers, spiritual wickedness in high places. One of them is female. Babylon the Great, mother of hearts, what's in there. You say, well, what would you call that? Well, I call that a UFO. That's an unidentified flying object. You can't tell what it is. Now, if you turn it up the other way, it looked like this. Like that. But they come in different sizes. Some of them come like this. But then others of them come like this. Now, uh, uh, let me say to start with here, to finish with, we've got to get out here in a few minutes. I think if a man doesn't believe in UFOs, he's mentally sick. Uh, they've been seen by more than 8 million people. Anytime you have to have eight million people testify of a thing being seen, some guy says it isn't there, it's just because he's out of his mind. <laughs> and the thing is, you have the newspaper all the time keep trying to talk you out of it and talk you out of it and talk you out of it, and 
each year they slip just a little bit more and, and catch up with what I was 50 years ago. The last thing they put out was a little film of dissecting a gray. How many of you saw that? You see that? Well, they're dissecting an alien called a gray. And uh, they show the, the, the autopsy, taking the parts out. And anybody watches the film said it's true because of the clock in it and the tools in it are from 1945 to 1950. Show the operational procedures. But that's old stuff. I don't deal with dead aliens, I deal with live ones. I have at home, I have five books called Matrixes. They're about this thick. And uh, those matrices are given to me by various people in various places to whom I don't know. I'll have a meeting in Detroit and a guy will come up and say, I think you'd like this, Brother Ruckman, and leave. I'll have a meeting over in Oshkosh, uh, Ruckman, see one of these, out of Seattle, here's something I think you'll enjoy, out the door he goes. Now I got, I got four of those things and recently got a fifth one. And those books are about that thick and that stuff is all classified material, highly classified, and that stuff, if that stuff is true, and I don't believe everything I read, I'm not, I don't buy everything, and that stuff is true, You've got underground out in the West, the land they're trying to get the foreign troops and foreign bases and take from people, environmental. Utah, Idaho, Colorado, New Mexico, Arizona, and get a break in Oklahoma, uh, Waco, Texas, and Ruby Creek, Idaho. If this thing is true, what you've got out there is underground bases of steel, stainless steel tunnels running hundreds of miles underground with gurneys up and down, bodies on the gurneys, aliens with CIA at work, high security, black security, double security that you can't get into, no matter how you get into it, machines that erase memories, memory race machines, the whole James Bond, Star Wars, Star Trek thing from start to finish going on right now. And what they're doing is showing you movies, getting you ready for what's coming. And what you think is science fiction is no longer fiction. And the cloning is one thing they learn from them, and they'll pop up later with the next thing they learn from them. But what they've done is made it a deal, if this stuff is right. They've made a deal, if you'll give us your technology, we'll let you do what you want to while you're here. Now, I don't believe everything I read, but I've read a lot of stuff. And I opened these books, and these books are not. I saw something back there when I was putting out the lawn the other night, it looked like a bright light, and it isn't that at all. I've got a thing about Bob Lazar, a uh, 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 hydroplane fellow, an engineer, and, a, and, a, and a, a, a nuclear physicist who works on UFOs, five of them. He'll get how big it is, how wide it is, how long it is, what it's made of, the metals they can identify, the metals they can't identify, the number they gave to the metal they couldn't identify to put it on a scale, whether it's toxic or whether it's not toxic, the whole thing in 1958. And as far as these aliens go, he'll give you at least five kinds. One kind of called reticuliums, like this. One are called cerians, like that. One bunch are called grays. That's the one you see. And the other are called a reptilian. And the reptilian have wings. And they have blondes. And the blonde is the thing that's nearest to a human being. And in, uh, in the War of the Planets, or the War of the Stars, one of them pieces, the blondes are supposed to help the human beings out. They look like German soldiers, gray uniforms, blonde hair. And then the last bunch are called, bless my soul, Elohim. That's this. That's the word for God. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. That's a Hebrew word. It's a Hebrew word. Now, these have various ways of reproduction and various ways of assimilation. And some of them don't assimilate orally. They assimilate through the skin, through osmosis. And the one you see constantly because now the cat's out of the bag, <laughs> is just one of them. The one you see looks like this. <laughs> now, how many of you have seen that? Let me see your hands. Well, that one's out of the bag. That's called a gray. And those grays uh, come and they, they say 
Now, I'm just telling you what I've got, you know, you take it or leave it. They say that uh, the best food they can feed upon is uh, children because it's uh, having that time to corrupt in the flesh as the adults. And so every year about 33,000 children disappear from America. They just disappear. And you hear them again. Now the trick is to get the kid to be used to this friendly little creature. So he'll accept horror as a natural, so if it comes into his room like E.T., a maggot or something else, he'll, it's a happy little monster, you see. So for about 20 years, you, but you see, Oh, aren't they beautiful? Aren't they glamorous? Aren't they? You know what the devil's doing to you? He's conditioning you to accept perversion yeah, right. and grotesqueness right. and horror as normal. You say, like what? Like rock music. Amen. You say, like what? Like modern art. Yeah. See, it doesn't extend just to Bible perversions, although that's true, too. They're getting you ready. And the kiddies are the nice little horror shows on Saturday morning, the cartoons, and the robots are your friends, and the monsters are your friends. They got a race one here, I forget his name, he's some kind of something from hell or something goes up and comes down and changes S E M P or S W A, what you know what the thing is? Oh that thing, that's the latest thing with the kids. And they're getting ready, ready for, get ready for you to accept something here. The other thing they say is the nearest thing to man's blood, as far as DNA and RNA is concerned, is cattle. So up in Wyoming and Colorado, the farmers have a time with cows disappearing, and then they show up, and the blood's gone out of them, and there's no incision. And the organs are gone out of them, and there's no incision. And the guys come to our school that have been up against it. I've had guys come to our school from North Alabama who would say that when they reported in the paper, landed at my granddaddy's place. And they hang around power lines, he says. And then they find this cattle out here, all this stuff going. Up north Alabama, one incident happened was this. A farmer came out of there, and the fellow who reports this is not even safe. And he says, several grays landed and absconded with a 12-year-old boy. And the, this farmer in the house heard the noise out in the back and came out on the back porch and saw him taking his boy up across the pasture. And uh, he had a rather logic tight compartment which is a, psycho, a psychological way of saying he didn't know what he was saying. And he said, the farmer said, you put that boy down or I'll ask God to blow up your rocket ship. And they dropped the boy and ran. And the guy explaining that thing says, the reason for this is the grays do not yet fully understand how people talk and how they act and they think anything a person says here is true and they have to act on it whether it's true or not. <laughs> that ain't the explanation. Yeah, the next day, whoever got on that ship knew who could blow up that ship better than any farmer ever knew about it. <laughs> and so if you had to run in with some of them, I'd pull that stuff. Amen. Now, how many runs have I had? I've got guys that pull me up and tell me about the boy girl getting married and the boy's been having visits, nocturnal visits for years and finally quit reporting because people make fun of him. And now that he's married, they're scared to death, they're gonna have one of them come in the room at night. And I tell him to get a German shepherd and put him in the room at night which is good advice, Amen. good advice. The animal, is, if there's anything there, the animal will spot it for you, will spot it, I guarantee you. Have I ever seen a UFO? Only about 80 of them, I guess. Now, I've never seen a flying saucer, but a UFO, I've seen them right and left. Anytime you want to see them, go out to Texas, deep in the heart of Texas. The stars at night are big and bright, deep in the heart of Texas. And go out to Texas in the summertime and put you out a, a cot out there, out in a, in a field someplace, lie on your back, and you will see the works. And down where I'm from, you're going to Pensacola Beach, and you will see the works. And what you'll see is this. Stop. Stop. They don't go like this. I know the ones that go like this. I've been up in the air longer than a seagull with sore feet. <laughs> <laughs> I've traveled around the, the equator eight times, 80, 80 times, 80 times by airplane with my miles. I'm gold medallion frequent flyer on about 18 airlines. <laughs> and when, it, when a satellite goes over, it goes over like this, and then it goes out because it always goes west to east, and when it loses the light of the sun, it quits reflecting. And you'll see it sometimes waver like this. I've seen the stuff they sent up and go over, but these things don't go like that. They go, and they stop, and they stop. The nearest thing ever, 
uh, felt it is what I'm going over my house at night. But that was a new new uh, air air machine I have that can stop an air like that and then take off straight from a standing position. I, mean, I know what they do and what they don't do. But this thing here goes like this, and then it stops, and you look back five minutes later, it's gone. And you can lie there and track them. I've been out mud fishing at night in Tampa, Florida with six guys with me, and see a light come up on the horizon here, and it'll go this fast. Gone. Five seconds, horizon, horizon. No green blinking light. I know what to look for. No red blinking light, no landing light, and no sound. Just like that. Over there in Pensacola one time, uh, I, I was down there at the house, and a couple of my boys lived out in the property where the school is in the trailer. And they came five miles back to the house one night, 11 o'clock at night, just all tore up and shaking and trembling. The hair standing in. I said, what is it? They said, that place got electricity all over it, Brother Rubin. It's got electricity all over it. I said, what do you mean? He said, it's in the air. It's in the air. You can feel it in your hair. If they're turning on light bulbs in the trailer that aren't screwed in. Now, I, I, th that'll happen up in, in w, WLW, uh, big force field up there outside of Cincinnati, in a 500,000 watt station with those control towers, uh, antenna, what do you call them, transmitters. They're housed in that area where the, the light bulbs from Christmas trees will turn on on the shelf. I mean, I've had that report from 20 people who live there. I'm not just, you know, just saying I pick up a rumor. I'm talking with four families and 20 people in four families. And, but these are 30 watt bulbs coming on in the, in the, in the pantry. <laughs> They're still in the cardboard box. <laughs> and these guys come tearing down there. Some go out there ruckman about that time. Boom, man, boy, I mean, the house rattles, explosion. And then what happens? We go out there the next day and something is blown up over that power station. That power station right across the street from our school, 666,000 volts. And I remember they put that thing through there. We tried to get them to bypass it, but you know the Gulf Power Company, they own the place anyway. They're going to put it where they want to put it. But bang over that power station, blew up that power station. The woods across the street caught on fire. And a fellow told me if one of those wires from those lines hit one of your cement buildings, it'd melt the cement blocks. That thing goes bam like that, and then, then they then they try to explain it. Well, it must have been a crash. There were no planes up. It must have been a helicopter. No helicopters are missing. No pilots up. And then about that time, in come five reports from Gulf Breeze of people who've seen a UFO take off over the bay right after the explosion. Of course, you don't pretend they don't know what they're talking about. So five years ago, a fellow over there at Gulf Breeze photographed a UFO yeah. for 20 minutes. And we sell the film at the Bible Baptist Bookstore. You want to get watch a UFO for 20 minutes? We'll show you one for 20 minutes. In full color operating, right over the territory of your operator, Gulf Breeze. If you get a map on UFO sightings, you'll find the, for main sightings, 10 places, Pensacola rates about number seven, something like that. And one time, finding metal in the ground they pick up, and they try to take it someplace and get it analyzed. Nobody knows what it is. Up comes the black Cadillac. Black is beautiful, and the men in black get out, and they're SWAT teams now. And they get out and come in there, and they say, you better get rid of that piece of metal or else. Give it to us or else. The fellow sent off to a lab to have it looked at. Give them a warning, and off they leave. That stuff's been going on for 40 years. 40 years. Now, I'll tell you the scenario if it's right. By the way, there's one more UFO in the Bible. It's in Ezekiel 1. And it's a thing like this with a fellow sitting in a seat like this. And there's a wheel here and a wheel and a wheel there, like a gyroscope. And there's something, there's something here with wings. Four wings over here and four wings over here fly and carrying this thing. That's Ezekiel chapter one, chapter two. You see what's that? That's an identified flying object. <laughs> All right, if this scenario is right, these things are already here, and they don't come from upstairs. They come from downstairs. And in the flood, they went downstairs and survived, and it came back up. These things can't be devils. One man had a thousand devils in him. That's the size of a mosquito. 
They're not angels, angels are 33-year-old men. They're spiritual wickedness in high places. They got craft that can take them maybe to Mars or Venus, maybe, I don't know. But these things are mutants. They growl like animals. Some people say they're five, some are five, six, some five, three, most of them are about three feet five. They have big ones, they have little ones. One fellow says he's had an affair with a woman on the thing with she has red hair and no human sound but growl like an animal. There's no there's only one there's only one source you could get an animal from that was half animal, half man. Like a cedar, that's half goat and half man. Or a centaur, that's half man, half horse. See those things? Those are mutants. They're called mythological animals. You know whether they're mythological or not. There were fallen angels on this earth in Genesis chapter 6. And what an angel knows about mutation and reproduction, you don't know. But they were here. And they didn't just mess with people. Otherwise, why'd God drown all the animals? All flesh had corrupted its way upon the earth. You know, he says another place, David caught the Syrians and he took their chariot horses and he cut the, the, the hawks. He howled those horses, 4,000 of them. You say, why? So they couldn't stand the hind legs. See, there's more in that Bible you'd care to find. One time a teacher asked a little boy to give a report on polar bears in a book. And when he reviewed the book, he said, this book tells me more about polar bears than I want to know. <laughs> And that Bible tell you more about the past, the present, and the future than you care to find out. Right. Amen. Turn to Leviticus 20. Leviticus 20. You talk about some rough stuff. You want a sex education? You got the right book. It just doesn't ever make it glamorous or ever make it funny. Leviticus chapter 20, verse 13. You're dealing with monsters. You know what shook them up? Alamodora, 1945. They weren't shook up when the hydrogen bomb went off. They were shook up when the atom bomb went off. Not over Hiroshima, over here in Mexico. That thing went boom. It rattled somebody's house. <laughs> and they were downstairs. I've flown over uh, New Mexico, Arizona, and Idaho and Montana, and Utah uh, approximately six times every year for 40 years. You got me off the Grand Canyon, I could walk back. And when you look out at that stretch of land that comes down from the Sierra Madre, Sierra Nevada, the Rockies, that thing is a blasted out, reamed out, dry, dead, dull, gray, green, stony, cactus, armadillo, rattlesnake place. It's one of the most godforsaken places you've ever seen in your life. That thing runs all the way down there. Colorado River comes down there. The Snake River comes down there. The underground rivers down through there. EPA is working on that. One time they found part of a submarine on them underground rivers. Somebody got a lost submarine, got messed up in Seattle someplace, wound up in the wrong place. But there's something going down through there, that place. And those places are called Area 51 and Groom Lake. And there's an Air Force base out there, Roswell. Yeah. And then right up between the, where Colorado and Utah and uh, New Mexico and Arizona cross, there's a highway. Yeah. And it goes all the way up to Salt Lake City. Can you guess the number of the highway? Yeah. 666. 666. 666. Go ahead and drive it. And that place where that thing crosses between uh, Colorado, Utah, Arizona, New Mexico, there have been more UFO sightings than any place in the world. Matter of fact, an old Japanese boy out there went out and, and, and got him a colored film, which you ought to see, that runs two hours, and he'll show you the government flying them all over the place. And I don't mean aliens. I mean CIA and that much. Leviticus, they're always behind. They never catch up. You never catch them. If you're in a Bible, you're always so far ahead of Houston Space Center, they don't know whether they're standing on their head or ear. Leviticus 20, birth, you talk against the Lord. You don't like that, do you, some of you? Tough apples, burn it. Amen. 
No, I'm not saying I'm in favor of killing them. I mean, the law came by Moses. That's a work situation. Boy, you sure better, a uh, queer sure better be glad he ain't under the law. Yeah. He's under grace. Paul says, neither effeminate abuse themselves of mankind, and such were some of you. Yeah. It's possible for them to get saved. Yeah. I never met one that was genuinely saved yet, but it's possible because he said, such were some of you, but now you're sanctified and so forth and so on. All right, verse, uh, verse 15. If a man lie with a beast, he should be put to death, and ye shall slay the beast. God kills all the animals when he kills the men. The days of Noah. They're mixed. And if a woman approach any beast and lie down there too, thou shalt kill the woman and the beast. They should surely be put to death, their blood should be upon them. Now in psychiatry, that's called bestiality. That's messing with animals. Farm boys know a lot about that. It wasn't practiced here in America until it was practiced in New Orleans, in fact, before World War I. And then it moved up to Las Vegas. You could pick it up in Las Vegas now, probably, if you got the right place. Now you see that woman and that beast? That's Beauty and the Beast. Yeah. Thank you, Walt Disney. Turn to Revelation chapter 17, pick her up. Yeah. And there she is. Yeah. King Kong and the woman, Wolfman and the woman, Mrs. Frankenstein, Dracula and the woman, the woman and the beast. Oh, Kong, oh, Kong. <laughs> Crying for a poor hairy ape. <laughs> Revelation 17. Verse 1, come hither, I'll show thee the judgment of the great whore that sits upon many waters. 3, so he carried me away in the spirit of the wilderness. I saw a woman sit upon a scholar colored beast. Beauty and the beast. What is she? Verse 5, mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. See that thing? Now, when the angels came down, they didn't just mess with women, they messed with animals. They got through messing with animals. First thing you know, the Indians had a sacred cow. He's a white cow. And the first thing you know, Ra was an eagle. And Osiris was a calf. And the gods began to get named like animals. So now they call them the bears. And the giants and the dolphins. And the tigers. And the panthers. Look at and out in uh, Texas, the fighting bobcats and deer. <laughs> well, that fighting deer was. That's outside of uh, San Antonio on them signs. <laughs> I've got to close here. We're over here in time. I'm just going to say this in closing. Right now, you have Slick Willie trying to get you to the EC and get you all tied up all the pagan religions, get them all in one big group, and uh, nature worship. And the EC is the European community, economic community. And they have a flag now, and they have a national anthem. And the national anthem goes this way. Dum 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 that's a choral symphony. A symphony should be just instruments, but, but he has a choral group in his fourth movement. They're singing a song there called Schiller's Ode to Joy. And Schiller's Ode to Joy says, we enter into the temple of the goddess, Joy, drunk with fire, and lift up this wine cup and drink. All men are brothers. He has a hymn singing there to the goddess of joy, and you get drunk toasting her because you're all one new global community. That's Beethoven, oh, 1830, 1820. That's their anthem. You know what their flag is? It's Beauty and the Beast. It's a woman sitting on a Spanish bull, like you use the matadors in the arena. You ever seen it? Well, you'll see it. You see it's got a flag up. It's got 12 stars around her head to counterfeit Israel in Revelation chapter 12. 
and she's sitting there half dressed on a, her uh, bull with his horns, and you never guess who that bull is. It's a lot of bull. <laughs> I know who he is. I studied Greek mythology and Roman mythology, and your grandfathers and grandmothers studied it, but they don't teach it in school anymore because there's too much science in it. They don't want to have you know what's coming. That bull is Zeus. And Zeus turned himself into a bull to get at Europa. And that woman on his back is Europa. That's Europe. Europe is named after that goddess. Europa, that's her name. E-U-R-O-P-A, Europa, Europe. And she's on that beast, and that beast is Zeus. That's their supreme god. And he becomes a bull to get her and carry her off. Beauty and the Beast. Now, folks, that's the great new world you've got to look forward to. You know what I'm doing? Yeah. I'm getting out. All right.